Hello, hello. Can you hear me? I can hear you. What's up, dude? Perfect. Ah, uh, not much, not much. I home all day these days, so. Yeah, no, for sure. I feel you. Home all the time. Um. So, dude, tell me about your Starcrafting. How's it going? Right. So I've been following your bronze to GM. Um, I'm. I tried both Zerg and Protoss. Now I'm now I'm trying Protoss, and I'm around two point nine k um, MMR. And my main issue is without a doubt PVT. Okay. Like both, ma mainly with like people just ordering me early game. Whilst I, I think I'm always being too greedy and I don't know where to cut some stuff out to make more units. Um, and the second thing is. Usually, if they don't all in me and we both go macro, I usually end up with the army with like a higher army value. But then I think I take engagements really poorly, sure. so I end up just throwing sure. the game anyways. Okay. Uh, sounds good. Sounds like we have a lot to talk about. We could break it all down. Um, I guess the next thing I have to a question to ask you is: is uh, I know you said you play you you were the one right that told me you were playing on the Asian server. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, so I can log over there. Uh, so you had replays too, right? Do you want to look at a couple of replays? Yeah, yeah. I've got like four because like two okay. of them are just one base coin, sure. so it's like six seconds long. Okay, so I will just give you my info on uh, Discord really fast, and then oh. just, just send me an invite, and then uh, uh, we'll be good. There you go. I just sent it in Discord, and then we'll just set up a party and look at it. But in general, I'll just throw this out there. You said platinum, 2.9k platinum, right? That, yeah. Okay, so the biggest thing, like I, I can help you have some ideas about how to engage fights, but realistically, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about like how to put minimal effort into maximum return with how you can engage a player better. Uh, it's not gonna really come down to uh, like full on your, your micro to it, like the biggest degree though, where it's like, oh, well, you have to like, hit these unit micro like control groups where you have like four yeah, control yeah, groups yeah. So it's, it's it's a bit excessive for everything but we'll break everything down and i'll give you some ideas on how to like fix simple weird issues nice uh all right so i can't i don't know did you send me an invite i have like five invites yeah i just i just sent it over okay so is your name barcode or nero by chance no it's shop i'll, I'll send my name over Okay, I got you. I got you. You got it? So, All right. Yeah. Great. There's just a few invites as well. But we're good. Uh, <laughs> okay. Um, promote the leader. All right. So uh, just to throw it out there, the way this works is just host up the replay with watch with others. And then before you start yep. it in the lobby, make sure you make me the lobby host in the, in the actual replay so that I can do the oh, okay. timers and stuff. Oh. Yo, Zach, thank you very much for the fucking sub, dude. Appreciate seven months. I'm just starting with an, like, a one base all-in. Okay. Can you play first? Sure. Uh, so you were getting one base all-in? Yeah. Okay, sure. Sounds good. At least, at least I think it was one base. No worries. <laughs> I, I don't know if I'm downloading it or not. I had a... Oh. Okay, mine said a problem occurred while connecting to the yeah, game. Same. Please try again. Let me try it again. Oh, God. Battle.net. <laughs> Strikes again. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. If it breaks again, I'm just gonna relog and then hopefully that fixes it. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> if it doesn't work. Oh no! Oh, uh, here, no. I'll, I'll relog and then uh, if it doesn't work this time, uh, you could just drag and drop the replay to me in, uh, in, uh, All right, I'll do that. in Discord. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll try, I, could, I could try and host it then. If it still doesn't work, then maybe we. I, uh, I, we, I could just like watch it in the stream with you. I don't know. It kind of sucks, but yeah. yeah, well, yeah I'm sure we'll Missed your out. stream right. while you were on vacation. Welcome back. Yo, thank you very much, Zach. I appreciate it, man. Thank you very much for the seven months up and the five dollar dono. Much love. Hope you had a good holidays, dude. Okay, so I am back on Korea. I'll invite you to the party. Or er, shit, I think we both did it at the same time. Oh, okay. Um, how about you do it? I'll just do nothing. Did you get the invite? Did I, I think we might have just broke it again. 
Nice. Oh wait, no. I think we're already in the party. Are we? Are we not? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Wait, no. I think it says we're in a party, but we're not in a party. So okay, I'll, I'll invite you. I'll invite okay, you. Okay. Okay. I don't have an invite. If you're inviting. Okay. Okay. I'm, okay. 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 Uh, okay. Okay. I'm out of a party. Now you do it again. Right now. And then I'll, then, now I'll invite you. There nice. we go. We're there we go. Okay. okay. We're on Here point. We Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay. I'm All gonna right. wait. I'm gonna wait three seconds, and then I play accept, and hopefully this works. Okay. I'm hitting accept. All right. All right. And we're oh, okay. okay. It worked. There we go. Okay. Just gotta be patient. You can't rush um, the system. Promote to lobby host. Right. Yep. Yeah. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay, so it's all working now. Good shit. Um, all right, so this one we'll talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about a couple things. I'll talk about your general build and your, you know, if there, because that is going to be a huge deal. Uh, I will talk about your scouting and I'll talk about how to yeah. read what Terran's doing and how to, like, make connections to, like, what you could see. And uh, if there's anything else as well that I don't touch on where you're like, no, I really want to know what this is. Feel free, by all means, yeah. interrupt me at any. No matter what I'm talking about, you have you're all totally fine to interrupt me at any point, and then just ask me your question, so you don't forget it and wait for Great. wait for me to finish my point, and then you might forget what you're thinking. Alright. Uh, well, yeah. Uh, so, anyways, uh, first things first against Terran, you know the pilot placement's going to be huge. It, really, pilot placement against every race is going to be huge. But I actually, I don't know how you feel about it, but I've actually. I know I used to, I personally used to be an advocator of like oh, oh block the high yeah. ground it's great I actually hate doing it now uh, right and the reason why is just because uh, I don't know how often you deal with people who do tank timings but I actually hate dealing with tank timings when my wall is so exposed it, I, and I something like for instance a one base all in it's harder to deal mm -hmm. with when you expose all of your core and your gate like this right. Yeah, I okay. So like, basically, what happened here is that I tried to do a reaper wall, but I suck at those, so I think I just messed it up. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, I would, and that's the thing too, right? Like a lot of maps, they have like awkward, sometimes it's like a, a little bit of a corner is too exposed, and uh, you can't actually like like the reaper squeezes through, and you're like, what the fuck? I thought I blocked that. Yeah, uh, exactly. Yeah, but uh, so like, but if you do like a, let's say a mineral wall, mineral to the wall attachment. It's so much more reliable and easy to wall it off to where it's like the Reaper will still get in your base, but mm -hmm. you'll actually kill the Reaper if he goes to the back of your middle line to try and like harass probes because he has no exit and you'll just make him turn back into your stalker again to kill it. Wait, so in this position, where would you wall? Like, where would you recommend me to wall? So I would say, if you think about it, like think, think about, for instance, if a Reaper were to jump in your base, right? Where would yeah. the Reaper be coming from like it probably be coming from the oh, high ground on the top of your main yeah. so if you think yeah. about then where he could go into your probe line happy new year it would yeah. probably be from the north side going down right so if you yeah. really want to make the best wall you can allow him to get into your base from the one side that or like there's there's two there's really two ways to do it like you can but it like changes how you micro the stalker so i'll explain it like we'll, we'll say the top side okay for first so if, if the Reaper entrance to your base is the north side and you wall the north side, it means he's going to go around the south side of your mm -hmm. nexus to go attack your probes to go opposite of where the gateway is. And if he does that, what you'd want to do with your gateway is you'd want to make the stalker spawn to the right so it yeah. traps the Reaper in your base. So you wouldn't want to spawn. You wouldn't uh, want to make the gateway spawn the stalker from like the south of the gate so that you make him run away from you. You'd want to trap him yeah. in there. So you shoot him as he runs into the wall, essentially. And then right. it, if uh, if you built your gateway on the south side, the same thing. You'd want to make it spawn to the right so you could go around the nexus yourself and trap him into the south side of your of your nexus where it gets trapped against the wall of the right. gateway in the pylon. So d it doesn't matter where you build it. You're going to trap him either way. Just make sure your stalker comes from behind where the reaper is going and shoots him into the corner. Uh, and then right. it, it's a very, very high chance that you'll kill his reaper too because if he tries to commit to killing a probe, he'll dive into your mineral line. to, But he won't have an exit away from your stalker. The only way he gets out is running through your stalker again. <clears throat> so, I, I personally like that a lot more now. And a uh, big thing it does too is it doesn't overcommit your tech to the point to where it's exposed if you get all in. And like, your, let's say your tech starts getting shot by a tank or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. 
Yo, hug a Zerg, thank you so much for the sub, and hang on, officer. Thank you guys so much for the subs. I appreciate you both. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so your scout is totally fine. Uh, like, in terms of timing, it's not bad. Um, your, uh, your Nexus core, or sorry, your Nexus, like, chrono usage is also fine. I would say, though, that now I do see one problem with your build, and that is uh, Probe 19 should be rallied to your nexus it's rallied to your natural if you're gonna go for a expand build and i assume you're gonna you are probably going to be going for, going to be going for a two base build i would assume yeah right yeah okay yeah, yeah. so what you should be doing what you should be aiming for is probe 19 ideally should be rallied to the natural and this means that when that probe spawns and walks down to the natural you'll be hitting 20 supply because it also counts for the supply of a probe being built inside the nexus yeah. so what that what what this would uh, do for you is if you're constantly building probes, it'll give you that perfect number where you'll hit 400 minerals right as you arrive at the uh, as probe 19 arrives at the natural. So you can just throw it on a nexus like immediately. Because if you think about it, right. you're at 270 right now, and you have three probes in production. But if you canceled two of them, and if probe 19 was actually heading to the natural instead of mining gas. You would be having, right. you'd be at 370 and yeah. you would be about to be there and you'd have 400 minerals right as you arrive and then you'd be good to go. Uh, yeah. So j just know like timing of building is huge. So that's a little bit of a hiccup there for you right now. And then always know right after you build that Nexus, really, really, really as fast as possible, try to build that core wherever you built the pylon. Um, and that's also what makes, here's another thing too. This is like a double benefit, which is why also I don't do the wall and high ground anymore. If you built the if you built the pylon like against the mineral line, uh, to where like you connect oh, minerals to the wall, it's it's less mining. Yeah, it's it's like less mining time lost because you have to run less distance to build the core, and build the gate. Right. So it's just faster doing it. I just I think it's just better uh, nowadays. Right. But yeah, you'd you'd want to build that core as soon as possible after you get the nexus down, uh, and then you know maintain pro production. And you you do not want to chrono boost a second time. Actually, I'm gonna go back. I want to see your chrono. I just want to make sure you chrono at the right time. You, I think chrono you, like basically right after I sent, right after at like 16 or so. So yeah, like if you like you you do it right. You just want to chrono right after the pylon is done. So like you build the gate, you can build the gate, and then you chrono right now, and that would be yeah, great. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Your your chrono was totally fine. Your your scout was fine. Your chrono was fine. Uh, the scout too. You could I could say this too. When you build a gate, you should send the probe who builds the gate. Just yeah, you should send it out. Yeah, I don't know what happened. Here. It's all good. Uh, just you have the, you have the right idea though. Like your timings of the scout and the chrono, those were great. The gas is good. All that shit's good. It's just the nexus is a little off for what I've seen so far. And then uh, we'll speed it up back to. I think my issue with the nexus is that a lot of the time. So like usually when when I build the nexus, I meant to build it like when the probe arrives at his base, right? But I'm so caught up with trying to read his build and whether, like, deciding if it's gonna be like a, an all-in or not, that I just spend too much time on the probe. Cause, cause I remember you telling me like, oh, um, something like, if you don't see a base, then like you build a core first or something. Okay, so. But then at the, yeah. I would say for now, just to keep it super simple, just disregard that. Who cares? Uh, just, okay. just make it your, make it like your standard opener for the first like two minutes. Always the same thing. If you want to do a two base oh, okay. build, do a two base build. And you can make it work eat totally fine. And uh, what you could do with it, because that way you're not going to be overthinking shit too much. Like you could, you're still going to scout him. We're still going to talk about what he could be doing, but just for your, the mm -hmm. sake of you and making shit flow faster for you, and you're not hesitating and wasting time, your build could be pylon gate gas. Send the probe down at night. Like your nineteenth probe goes down to the nexus. So at twenty supply, you'll be throwing down your natural. So you go Nexus, then Core, then Gas, then Pylon. And your two rounds of Chrono Boost are attached to two Pylons finishing. So when Pylon 1 finishes, Chrono Boost 1 starts. And when Pylon 2 finishes, Chrono Boost 2 starts on the Nexus. Right. And then you also pair Chrono Boost 2 on the Nexus with... This is also when your Core is done, because the Pylon and the Core will finish at the same time. That's also when you Chrono Boost out a Stalker. And that'll... That'll 100% keep you safe from all types of Reaper pressure, uh, like for the realist, like realistically, unless it's proxied. It might do a little bit of damage early, but that's acceptable. It's, it's, it's whatever. Uh, but yeah, in general, chrono boosting out your stalker and your probe on the second chrono is uh, is what you should be going for. 
So it'll it'll just take away the hesitation and like the thought process of going like, what the fuck is he doing? I don't know. And it makes it confusing mm -hmm. and all that. Now, we're going to talk about his build, okay? We're gonna actually going to talk okay. about... So we're, we have your build for the first two minutes. It's all set in stone. Ideally, that's what you're going to be going for. But now if we're talking about his build, look at his gate and look at your... Cor or, your uh, or sorry, look at his barracks and look at your gate. And notice how there's a difference there. There, right. sh there shouldn't be because a gate and a, uh, and a barracks and a supply depot and a pylon, all of them take have... Yeah, exactly. They all take the same time, and they all take the same amount of resources to build. So it should be identical. But the fact right. that he, he, the fact that he has a late barracks, I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot here just for a second, and then I'll I'll tell you what I think after. But just I want I want you yeah. just to start thinking about it and like critically like just see what you jump to for a conclusion here. What do you feel like this would mean for you if you see a barracks that's a little bit late? But it, but I, I mean, well, let me just say one more thing. Looking at his base, like looking at his okay. entire base now, I'm just guessing it's because he built like a second gas, and that might have took some resources away okay. that could have been used to build the barracks. Okay, but yeah, I would say yeah. I, like I was gonna say, just keep in mind the barracks is almost done, so it's not something too severe. And I would agree with what you just said. There's more gas now. That there definitely should be a little bit more of a gas investment because this is, like, if you really think about it, if your gateway just finished. And his barracks is not done, but it's almost done. It's it's like 80%, yep. 90% in that range. You would be like, well, there's not enough time for there to be like a command center down or really not also not enough time for there to be like proxy racks as well. Like it, right. realistically, there's not just a bunch of proxy shit and command center stuff. It probably just means more gas investment. So that's yeah. you know, a good, good con uh, assumption for you to think that way. And then going in deeper into his base, you should confirm that. And you just did. You just saw double gas really fast. That's super fucking good scouting right there in terms of like just what you've given yourself to see with your probe. And out of this, out of seeing a, pro, a player going for double gas, automatically, the fact that he still has a non-proxied Rax and he has double gas at his base, uh, this would tell me that the first thing you should be seeing would be very, very, very high chance of a factory follow-up to this barracks. So if you wanted to confirm it with your probe, that would be a pretty like it would be a good thing to do. And here's here's why. Okay, let me let me explain why this would make sense. This is way too much gas for Reapers. And if he was gonna go Reapers, you wanna kinda delay gas like and Reapers is the most expensive thing you can do off of the barracks, like right when the barracks is done. But he made you you wanna kinda make the barracks first and then really focus on the gas if you're gonna go for a Reaper build. Like one gas is appropriate, double gas before even one racks is done is a bit much. Because, yeah. yeah, you're never going to have enough gas. Or, you're, sorry, you're never going to have enough minerals to, like, make enough barracks to actually spend your gas. So, right. doesn't seem like a Reaper thing. And then if you look at the other alternatives out of a barracks, you have a reactor, a tech lab, that can then make Marines, which is definitely not going to be Marines because that's pure mineral, or Marauder. And it's not going to be Marauder because it's just light. It's very light on the gas. So, this is, again, way too much gas for Marauder. Very unlikely that it's going to mm -hmm. be just pure Marauder timing. So... Then we can think of what's the last thing the barracks can do. It can do ghost, and I'm gonna say it again. This the same thing. If you if you understand the cost of what things are, way too much gas, way too fast for ghost. Simply because, um, a ghost academy after a barracks is done, you can then make a ghost academy, and that's only 50 gas. It's the same cost as a reactor, uh, in terms of right. gas. So this is way too much fucking gas again. When double gassing before the barracks is even done. You're gonna, he'd have an, like a ridiculous amount of gas in the bank for Ghost. So even if you're wrong and he does do one of these things, it's just super inefficiently done. That It doesn't matter if you're wrong. You're still going to crush it because it's just not going to be that effective. So it would right. seem most likely that this dude's going to tech like something more gas expensive, which is most likely going to be going into factory tech and even possibly into starport tech. Uh, so so you, would you say if you go into... So your first guy and you see double gas... So it's likely to be a factory follow-up. Would you say that all that it's also a very likely chance that it, they're gonna do some sort of early aggression on you? This is the this is the final point that makes it confirmed as to like what you should expect and what you should think. You have access right now. If, like if you look at your vision, your probe has access right now to look at both of his gases. And yeah. if you don't, if you if you do or don't know this, it's totally fine. But if if you didn't know, a gas. I the amount. Yeah, exactly. You just quickly look at it. And a gas starts with 2250. Every gas in every game, every map has 2250, no matter what. That's what it starts with. Yeah. And if he already has mined 
twenty like he's down to twenty one fifty or below that means he's guaranteed yeah. already mined at least two hundred gas. Like we're talking like yeah. two twenty, two fifteen, like Avs has been taken out of the gas or whatever. Uh that in general, that tells you, okay, the barracks isn't even done yet, and this dude's already mined over two hundred gas. This is a fucking lot of gas. So mm -hmm. that is that is a tell that tells you that should be okay, that's factory. That's definitely gonna be factory. Now, if there was, right. like, if you looked at one of the gases, though, let's say one of the gases had mined 100 or, like, 80, and the other gas had only mined, like, 10. Like, it was, so you had one gas that was at, like, 2170, and the other gas was at, like, 2240. I'd be like, okay, now, yeah. you might want to be careful about their, the potential chance of there being a, like, a proxy racks on the map. Because that would be a situation where, uh, the Terran player would have mined less gas. Like, it looks like he's double gassing, but they took him really late, so he could totally have made more barracks on you in that regard. So that that could be a, a, situ a situation where the guy could have made his first racks proxied, and his second racks could be... Or, like, maybe the third racks could be the one that's at his base, where he's trying to, like, hide the racks, where it's like, I'm playing standard, but he's not really playing standard. You know what I mean? But this yeah, dude, yeah, yeah. this dude mining over 200 gas already is very unlikely. To, it's very unlikely to be like three racks all in reapers, because uh, okay. it's just ridiculous. So the best thing you can do to make this all hopefully less confusing, the best thing you can do with this situation right now is keep your probe at his base right now where it is, and just wait to see what he throws down next to that racks. Is he gonna make a factory, mm -hmm. or is he gonna not build nothing? And if he builds nothing, if he builds nothing, get ready for proxy. If he builds something, well, now you know, okay, this dude's rushing tech. So we'll see what your probe does for a second. Definitely not going to be an expand, though. He definitely can't afford it. So I think running out of his base was a mistake because he could depot yeah. you out now. Right, I see. If there was only one gas and it had only mine, because here's the thing. This is the, this is the final thing. This is how you should read someone who goes for an expansion. There's two ways for it to be done by Terran. One is he just doesn't have a gas at all, and he's being super greedy, and he's going to build like a bunker in a command center uh, if he's going to go for an expansion. Another way for a Terran player to expand is you should look at the gas. If he had only one gas, this is standard, uh, for like if yeah. it's an expansion build, the way it should go is the barracks should be finishing at the same time that he has mined 50 gas. So if you look, okay. at, the, if you look at the barracks, and, the, and also the way this should go too is... Or what's up? Are you talking right now? Sorry. No, no, no. Okay, no. your mic was going off for a second. I just know you were trying to say something. Um, uh, so the way it should go to, if it's standard, is also there should be no de deviation of the barracks to your gateway. That should be the same. Standard builds always right. have no no wait time on like the first barracks. So uh, it should have been the barracks should have been paired to the gateway. And if you went to his base and saw only one gas, and you just clicked it really fast, you only have to do it once the whole game. That's totally fine. And you go, cool, he's mined about 50 gas, and my gateway is basically finishing right now, which means his barracks is finishing right now. It's a Reaper expand. Then it would be appropriate to bring the probe back to the natural and be like, let's see that expansion. Um, and it would be normal. Uh, but if your probe goes back to the ramp now, I would not be surprised if you were depot walled out. <laughs> I'm just going to watch your probe for a second, see what it does. Okay, so you go home. So you're actually giving yeah. yourself limited information, I would say. You definitely should have kept that. Pr if you want to, like, confirm what he's doing, the fact that he's shown you really early delayed racks, double, fast double gas, that is 100% some aggressive shit. And uh, that would have been the best thing for you to do would have been to definitely, like, keep your probe in his base a little longer just to see what's going on. Because uh, if we look at all vision right now, we can see that factory and now a reactor. Those are two massive pieces of information. And now let, let's just pretend you saw this, okay? Let's pretend that you okay. saw reactor on racks with a factory follow-up. Now I would say, what do you, then here's actually, so I'm going to, I'm going to actually ask you a question and then I'm going to give you some more information after, because there's a lot of ways you can look at this that give you so much information, but just simply put, if you saw reactor racks and a factory following it up, what do you feel like it would probably be? If you had to guess. If I had to guess that, since like the factories before the second base, I'm just gonna guess it's like a one base all in. Okay, so, I would agree with you. Yeah, agreed. That makes a lot of sense. It's probably not gonna be Hellions for two reasons, and that's that. I'm actually glad you said that because like that logic, because if it would probably be Hellions if there was only one gas oh, and if yeah. there was a command center, it's probably not gonna be Hellions. Getting close to four because. Years. Uh, 
there is no there's no natural and there's an overemphasis on gas right now. He's still mining gas full on. So if he started making hellions, he'd have shitloads of gas and he'd have no way to spend it. So mm -hmm. you're correct in the sense that you think that the reactor is actually for the barracks. And this factory is probably going to make like a tech lab right when it's done. And he's going to make tanks out of it. And he's probably also going to add on like a starport. That's very like logical way to think about this because this is way too much gas for Hellions on one base. It makes no sense. So good shit. Uh, that's, that, that would have been a good read if your probe was still here. Uh, it, the, the, the natural and the gas emphasis is the, re the way you would tell if it is or is not going to be Hellions. Right. All right, so you go back, and uh, now I'm gonna go back and look at your build for just a sec, uh, for what like what was happening during your scout. So you go for. And I'll just excuse the fact that you're going core first. It's fine because you were saying that's something I've said before, and I'm sure I've said that in B to GM before, where I'm like, yeah, hey, you can just do this. It's definitely not necessary. You don't have to do that. It's a bit over excessive. Uh. And then, uh, so the, hold on, I'm going to look at your build one more time. I want to see your, your money because your money definitely ramps like crazy. And, uh, okay. So yeah, this is what I was talking about when I said, like, I spend too much time looking at a probe that I don't actually end up building anything. Sure. So just, just know, keep in mind, this is probably going to be the easiest thing for you to do in terms of like making sure your build flows and it doesn't get fucked up. And it's just the first two minutes of the game. If you start getting in the habit of pairing a core and a nexus together every time, just pair yeah. it. That's like, and if it, like, what that means too is basically, uh, we're gonna aim for twenty supply as well from now on. Okay, so just, just I would definitely say write this down. At twenty supply, yeah. you stop building probes. Just for this is the only time in the game you're really gonna stop building probes. But at twenty supply, mm -hmm. stop building probes, and you're gonna go into building the nexus first. And then you're going to go into building the core directly right after. You're not going to build a probe in between. You're just going to go Nexus core. And this is going to allow you to right. not have supply block issues. Because you're, you're going to almost supply block even though you cut probes for just a second this one time. But it's going to, what this allows you to do is it allows you to get your natural set up really well. And it also allows you to uh, get your tech flowing, like rolling and on point. So you're not like having super delayed stalkers or super delayed robo or whatever tech you want to go for. So mm -hmm. 20 supply, Nexus and core, follow that up then with resuming pro production, and then immediately take the second you have enough minerals to put these buildings down, you go gas first and then pile on right after. Uh, and it will right. you'll be able to hit 23 out of 23 supply with the probe being built. Your pylon will finish and it will unlock beyond 23 supply, uh, ideally. And then after that, once the pylon unlocks it, that's when you chrono and you're good to go. Right. The reason why you're having a problem right now is because the probes never stop, and I, I get it. Um, and this, it's the ideal situation, right? Where I'm like, never stop building workers, but uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a very minor supply block as well. Like that didn't like lose you the game, but if you just get in the habit of doing what we just talked about just a second ago, but the 20 supplies hold probe for just a second, do your shit, your build will just flow so much better, and it's actually that build will take you through the rest of playing the game. That is actually a solid build all the way through GM. So, and then again, it's just the first two minutes of the game where it's like, that's the technical part. And then now it's just like maintaining production from this point on. Um, mm -hmm. So overall, your build's not that bad. You have the right idea. Uh, in terms of like, if you just change the Nexus thing, your build will be fine. Your, your chrono timings and your production timings have been fine otherwise. <laughs> now, pylon placement is a huge thing, okay? So pylon one um, should be with gateway core. That's uh, we, uh, but you know you can put it wherever you want. If you wanted to put it on the wall of the cliff, that'd be okay. But if you do it behind the middle line, that'd be also perfect. That'd be great. Pylon two should be around the nexus. Ideally, uh, if you put the first pylon on the nexus with like the core and the and the and the gate, ideally pylon two should be on the opposite side of the nexus. So you have more pylon room to build more tech. And then pylon three, the one you just built, should actually be. Um, I would say near the natural, like to give you the access to build a battery early if need be. So, right. uh, pylon three should always be paired with the, like build pylon three near the natural. That'd be great. Cause that's, that's also not going to be the pylon. that's going to be your, you're not going to really have the issue of supply blocking with pylon three 
because pylon 2 mm -hmm. is the supply block preventing pylon beyond 23 supply but pylon 3 yeah. will be getting thrown down beyond the point of your nexus giving you supply so pylon 3 is easy as fuck to put down and if you put it down yeah. near the natural it'll help cover the probes and protect them at the natural pylon 4 and pylon, pylons 4 5 6 whatever anything after the point after pylon 3 those ideally should be getting thrown down around the perimeter of your base so and then what this does for you is it allows you to just see drops and like see air units coming at your base before they're actually in your base so just it's like a good way to set up like ideally your base uh in a way where it covers you from future problems but it is no actual like ex extra investments for you okay your probe rally is good your probe usage is good the only thing you missed as well is you actually didn't chrono boost your nexus again. Uh, that's one thing to admit that you missed. So just make sure when you chrono yeah. boost the soccer, pair it with a with a chrono boost on probes. I'm usually late on that because my habit. I, I think I just habitually do chrono boost when the natural is done. So I just do a double chrono boost. Sure. Uh, yeah, it's a bit late. Make sure, just make sure you definitely do it for the first two pylon pylon based chrono boosts, and then after that, just do it whenever chrono boost is ready to go. Yeah. Uh, Gateway number two and Robo, you built them very well. Uh, your timings of that are great. You built them during the time of building the Sentry, and you're about to have enough money to build. Uh, if you didn't have probes queued up right now, you actually could build your Stalker, which I'm not going to really harp on this too much because your Stalker is only delayed by probably three seconds right now. So it's not that it's not that huge. As long as your probes are really running, that's the main thing I care about. Because uh, your your, your Stalker is actually going to have a little bit of – or your, rather your Gateway – is going to have a little bit of idle time anyways between having the warp gate finish because the way it works is you have the, enough time to build three units out of your gateway and you'll have about like six seconds of idle time on the gate and then your warp gate finishes so it's totally yeah. fine what you've done uh because you'll yeah it's not a big deal but your building wise is all good i like it because uh, th these are all massive critical things that make a big difference of like if you're going to hold null in or not uh, your pylon's being thrown down at your natural. This is good. You definitely need one. And then I love your scout. Now, this is that moment where you're, uh, you're starting the observer immediately. This is good. But now from here, it's going to be, can you maintain, uh, your production of all your, you know, your nexus and also maintain warp gate production and, and also maintain robo production. Um, mm -hmm. and we'll, we'll also see what you're doing with the scout. So now I'm not going to look at your scout first. I'm going to look at your production, and I want to see if you build stalkers and if you maintain production after observer while your Phoenix flies through his base. So right, right now, it definitely should be a couple of uh, stalkers being thrown down. Yeah, I think I missed the stalkers. I saw, I think I saw, I saw no second base. So I like went into panic mode and just built it. I just built shield batteries. Sure, and that that's one of those things where you should not have expected a second base based off the fact that he double gassed for so long. Anyone who has yeah. more than 200 gas before their first racks is even done, that dude is not expanding. That dude is 100% going to do, be doing some gas build to you, and a 1-1-1 makes the most sense uh, for opener-wise. So, And then one battery is totally doable just to open it up with, and you'd be fine as long as you maintain production because right now what you've done is you've delayed... So you're still delaying it. You've delayed your stalkers for even longer by now also double battering and double gassing uh and right now you could actually have four stalkers out with the sentry and your stalkers could probably your, your gateways for stalker production could probably be like 50 percent to like 60 percent of the way done in terms of cooldown so you'd almost be ready to throw out another wave of two more stalkers again uh in like yeah. maybe the next like seven seconds or six seconds and then your robo made the observer and nothing has been happening since then and that's the shit that's going to hurt you so much more than anything else. Because that's going to make the difference of, like, is your army going to actually be big enough to, like, defend yourself? So, yeah. just always keep in mind, the, the golden rule of StarCraft is make sure with whatever you build, you're maintaining production. That That's the, the, the number one. So, building extra gates, building batteries, building gases, and stopping production, that's breaking the rule. You should only be adding these extra buildings on when you can afford them while maintaining. I like your chrono of the of the uh, the robo though as a follow up to this, but there's still no stalker production, which is definitely hurting you. It probably could have been done by now, and you could be making you could now yeah. be ready to start stalkers five and six instead of stalkers three and four. Now I'm gonna back it up and I'm gonna show you with your hallucinated phoenix really quick uh, what we could talk about.
and what you could quickly just analyze and uh, go from there. So again, we, we saw the double gas early, right? And we, that's definitely an indicator that tells us, okay, yeah, probably not gonna expand because that's some fucking heavy gas. And this is definitely gonna be some weird pressure build or all in build. And now we see reactor barracks so far with starport and a bunch of Marines. And now we're going deeper and we see medevacs and tanks and a second racks even. And then you actually deviate your Phoenix up, which was a good move because you saved it for a second. And now you're going deeper into his base. And I, I would say all things look as standard as could be because you still see double gas being saturated the entire time. You see uh, a fully saturated middle line. Here's a big one. You actually see no production on the command center. You see no SCVs being built. The way you can tell is there's there, there's like sparks that fly out of the doorway of the command center and it lights like the flights kind of flash on and off a little bit. Uh, and right now there's just nothing. It's just idle. Uh, so that's a huge sign that he's not building SCVs anymore. Uh, like that, it's, it's, there's really shouldn't be SCVs being built as well either way because you, th another tell that tells you this is that this dude built a second barracks. So he's not just doing yeah. 111 into a second command center. He did, he did 111 into a second racks. So that second racks, yeah. even though you didn't see it, very likely could have a tech lab on it like it does, which could mean that he's going to upgrade his Marines to push you with, and this is going to be a... Pretty much one and done attack to try and kill you. So the best way you can yeah. defend this, the best way you can defend this, is just have enough shit to defend it. That's all it is. It doesn't matter about your right. like. If we're talking like masters or GM, micro does play a bit more of a factor here. That definitely is real. That's a real thing. But for plat, a hundred percent, all you got to do is maintain production, and you will be okay. You'd be just fine. And I would, I would even say. You could, you could get away with this with just one battery and you could just overcharge that battery when he shows up and you could even do things like take a third base still. It sounds crazy, but you could, as long as you maintain production out of your, your uh, natural or out of your two gates and your, uh, your robo, you could literally just be like, well, uh, my natural is fully saturated and I'm still maintaining production and now I have enough money to expand again. I could expand again. You could even win doing that. I'm just, I just want you to know you could do that. But if you want to try and react to this in a way where you're like, all right, let's make sure we don't die. Instead of taking a third base, adding on two more gateways, so now you go to four gate robo, that's also totally acceptable. Just know all the, the only thing that matters is maintaining production. So this is just way too much loss of time of production. Because that robo has been idle for probably like 12 seconds and those gateways have been idle for probably like 30 seconds. And yeah. counting. It's still idle. There we go. You, I, I would say those gates were idle for probably like 35, 40 seconds. Nah. Alright, and then Immortals are not a bad choice. Stalkers are not a bad choice. And I would say this too. No more, because you've just confirmed what he's doing, no more Hallucinated Phoenix. And the reason why that's a big deal is because I would say if you do do Hallucinated Phoenix, watch your sentry and only send one out when you have 150 or uh, sorry, 125 energy because uh, the hallucination. Exactly. You want to make sure you always have enough for the, the guardian shield. Actually, I think is a hallucination 75 energy, actually. It's actually 75. So you want to be yeah. at 150. My bad. It's 150, not 125. Uh, but yeah, you, you just want to make sure you always have enough for the bubble. That way, when he shows up, you're not just getting destroyed by Marines. Yeah. Because you already should have an idea that he's going to just do a timing attack with you against you with some type of air support, be it medevac, and then it's going to be stimpack yeah. Marines and tanks. Now. Yeah. I think what really caught me off guard here was him just dropping me. Sure. Dropping into my main. Because I'm in general really bad at just spotting drops. So I just struggled them a lot. Well, one of those reasons why is because you don't actually put any buildings on the perimeter of your base. So if yeah. you actually had, if you did pylons, this goes back to what we talked about earlier. We talked about pylons four, five, six, seven, eight. If you put those like on the top, the very, very like left most area of your main, like, but at the peninsula, that's like top left of where your middle line is. And then you put maybe another one like, like yeah. Uh, exactly. Like right here would be a good pylon placement right there would be a good pilot placement like if you go straight north of your gates 
like where the two right. gates combine. If you like, if you okay. think about like that little corner pocket, go straight north of that and put it on that high ground part of the of the main base. It'd be a great spot to put it to. Right. And then if you don't actually have the pylon gateway core set up on the cliffside where the Reaper could jump, another pylon there would be great. And then another pylon in the bottom right of the like the, the bottom middle pylon you have on the natural. Move that all the mm -hmm. way to the right to where it like goes in the corner tucked away there. And maybe another one to the, where the right side of like where the gas is, but down to where the corner is right there. So you just have like right. as much vision in the open airspace as possible with like a few pylons. <clears throat> and it will give you a reaction to see, oh, drops are coming or a banshee's coming or some air unit's coming to my base faster than what I'm ready for. And even if you don't react to it right away, if you're like, oh, shit, I didn't see it right away and this sucks. The best thing you could do is the second he shows up, take these probes and just run them away. Like run them down south or something. Just run them away. Get them the fuck out of there. And then uh -huh. aim, like select the army, aim, move towards him. And then keep warping in units. Keep making stalkers, keep making anything you can. And I would say the fact that he has tanks and marines and medevacs, and he's now shown you, and now if, if you didn't know what it was before, somehow, and now you fully know what it is now, because you're like, oh, he's attacking me with marines, tanks, and medevacs. The best thing you could do, because your army is full on sentry stalker, or one sentry with stalker immortal, if you just made one round of zealot, just one. Like, like, it's about the fight's about to happen. Just make one wave of zealot out of your gateways, because right now you have two available, uh, ready to go, mm -hmm. and you have a couple more that's are they're almost done as well. They're cooled down in four seconds. If you just made a couple zealots, and you made them out of range of his tank, so I would say make them like where your robo is right now, because you're about to aim move that way anyways. Yeah. You could just have them go in first, like right as your stalker is going behind them, aim move your whole army at his at his army with a guardian shield with zealots in first. So you pop Guardian Shield 2 as you get close. And if those Zealots lead the charge with... Uh, even though they're not upgraded at all, that's totally fine. They just lead the charge in terms of the tanks will shoot them first. It makes your Stalkers not take nearly as much damage. Because tanks right. beat the shit out of Stalkers, but they don't, they're don't. they horrible against Zealots. So it allows you to get a much better engage. And that would be it. So as long as you just kept making units, kept making units, kept making units. Oh, he's here? He dropped me? Okay, A move him. Warp in a couple Zealots because he's got tanks in my base that are sieged now. And tanks will now shoot the zealots, and we engage. Very high chance you will crush that. Even right. though, even though you don't have a battery here, that'd be totally fine. And the reason why is because your supply off of two base production could have been much higher than his because he's attacking you at five minutes and thirty seconds. Your natural should be started around one twenty-five to one thirty, which means your natural should be finished around like we're talking 236 to like 245 or something like that the, the, around 240 ish so if we have the difference of like 240 to now 530 that's almost three minutes of time of just money you've had more than he has like your natural by this point has definitely paid for itself and given you more money to work with so if you just maintain right. production you'll have more supply than he does guaranteed like this is a, this is kind of a late one base all in that's why I'm. That's that's why the golden rule is literally: if you can just maintain production, you will fucking crush your opponent. Uh, so, I want to just I want to show you an example. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna write this down really quickly because I'm I'm gonna give you just a. We'll, we'll go through this a lot faster now, but I want I will come back to this a little bit later, and I'm going to uh write this down really quickly uh so right now at 5 30 we'll go back to right when he dropped you like i want the exact second da, da, da. so he drops you at right now okay 5 31 so at 5 31 <clears throat> you have uh 45 probes which is fine 45 probes you have 74 supply and you have out of that supply we'll actually go specific now on units you have one observer, you have seven stalker, and you have one sentry and two immortal. Okay, and this is again at 531 on the clock. And you actually scouted this <clears throat> uh, with your probe initially around like 130 with the double gas, and you reconfirmed it with your sentry at like three minutes almost, I believe, with, yeah. the, with the hallucination. Uh, or it was more like maybe like almost four minutes, but so you've ba you've basically been crit boosting out your robo constantly ever since 
like around four, like twenty. So I'm just gonna keep, I'm gonna keep that in mind. Okay, so I just want to know where you're at. So we're because we're gonna I'm gonna give you an example of like where you could be at if you just had more efficient usage of what you're what you're dealing with and what could be the case. Now, right. Going on from that, uh, we'll kind of go through this quicker now. And we'll see how you react to this and uh, when the drop happens. And I imagine it's just, things are gonna fall apart a little bit. But he's here. Your probes run. L little late on the probe running, but again, I feel like that would help if you had pylons giving you more vision to see what's going on. And that's also yeah, another I reason. Just, I just punch up here and get shot. Like, yeah, it's just bad. Yeah, because I, I think I think I just get choked up. Mm between the gas and the nexus and then sure they aoe me to that so the best way you could deal with this would be if you if you're like okay well may, exactly like my base is a little fucked up it's a little awkward i want to make sure my army doesn't engage in a very awkward way you're not there's no rush okay there's nothing that's like holy shit if i don't go within the next like four seconds i'm dead the only thing that was yeah. th that that situation was your probes you ran them kind of late which, but again, it's not the end of the world. You're still ahead by eight probes. It's not even that bad yet. You're, you're still in a decent spot if you kill this army. The bet, but because like the only thing that really matters here if it dies is your nexus, and that's not even close to dying right now. I think it still has 1,632 health, and these marines mm -hmm. and the tanks are not going to kill that within the next like five seconds. It would take them probably like 15 seconds from now to kill that thing. Uh, right. So the best thing you could do would be. Like I said before, do another warp and wave of like get yourself ready to go. Like maybe cancel that one extra mortal in the robo, and do like four more zealots because you actually have all four gates ready to go. And if you cancel that immortal, you'd basically have enough money to do four zealots at once. So if you threw down like four zealots like at the pylon or something at the where all the robo is, you could also grab your like immortals and soccer group and you could green box it to where like fifty percent of it could go to the bottom left of the gas at your bottom of your base. And the other 50% of it right. could sit between the gas and the nexus, like kind of where it is now. Yeah. And you could just A-move it, like suck the army A-move. And you could have your army coming from three different angles, where like the zealots come from the top, your, and then 50% of your stalker and immortal come from the left side of the minerals and the right side of the minerals. And you don't even micro it where I'm like green boxing everything. After you're actually taking the fight, you just pre-spread it and then A-move it after that. And you forget about it. You don't even touch it at that point. Right. And then all you do at that point is you just make sure you're maintaining probe production and maintaining immortal production and maintaining stalker production or whatever. Make sure, just make sure your production is being maintained. And then you could grab your probes and send them back to mine minerals again. Right. Uh, so pre-spreading is huge. And it, that just comes from green boxing your army and what looks like half your army, just send it to like a nice open area as well. Because like the tanks are a bit high. So you could totally use the south side of your bottom gas to like position your units to not get attacked in that situation. Yeah, I get. Yeah. And one of the big one of the big problems there for you is you're actually microing that fight too. You are uh, like you're you're over you're over committing to it to the point to where. You, you're fully focused on it because you haven't made probes in a long time. You didn't make any zealots in a long time. You've had double robos queued up in this robo for a long time. And those are all the more important factors here that need to be done. Instead, you've been fixated on looking at his army and looking at your army and you've actually done nothing in the meantime. Ever yeah. since you built that Twilight Council, that's the last thing you did like 34 seconds ago uh, in terms of production. So you've been spent like half a minute essentially just doing nothing and realistically all the micro should have been is pre-spread and a move because you did a move but there was no pre-spread and your base is a bit tight which is understandable so there's it's a bit of a fuck it's like it's a bit of a bottleneck situation for you and you're just getting destroyed uh but even then you sh i would say if you pull back from his army like that you've guaranteed you're going to lose the fight anyways you would have e you would have honestly been even better off if you're not going to build anything which you haven't done yet like you've actually added nothing into your army uh, up to this point anyways you would have you would have been better off just like taking the fight even though it was a shitty fight just taking the fight because all that's happened is you've allowed his uh tanks to pop you like four times and then you backed off and you're re-engaging so now you're like to pop you again right and yeah just know oh shit i didn't mean to hit restart just know the biggest thing of all is 
compositionally, all you would have had to have done to fuck his army over is a guardian shield would destroy his marines, and a zealot would destroy his marines as well as his tanks. Like, and I'm not even talking about the zealot killing everything, it's just absorbing the damage while your whole army kills everything. And you would have known what he's doing already, based off the fact that if you... The, the two scouts you gave yourself, which is the first one, was the double gas early. That is definitely not going to be an expand build. That's definitely going to be some weird tech build. And you confirmed what kind of a tech build it was with your sentry uh, hallucination of the Phoenix. And you went, oh, tanks, marines, and medevacs. So if that was the case and you saw tank, marine, medevac, I'm not telling you to build zealots right then. You don't have to build zealots right away. You can build zealots as he gets to your base because zealots can be warped in immediately. But guardian save for guardian shield it's so fucking huge because it it g basically gives you two extra armor upgrades against the marines it, just, it might as well be like you have level two armor the whole time against when the marines are there with level zero weapons it's so game changing how big that is right and if you just kept making units you would have had more shit so about this game anything that happened and so far in india and at all is there anything that you're not sure about or that would seem confusing and didn't make sense. No, it's fine. I just have to make more stuff and just be more efficient with my production. The biggest mistake you made was not making zealots and when he showed up at your base and not having a guardian shield for that that thing, that react reaction to it. And also, the other big mistake you made was leaving his base too fast with your probe. The, the right. initial scout. You could have saw that factory such a long time ago and you could have reassured yourself that it's nothing weird. And it is, in fact, mm -hmm. going to be like a one 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 all in. Right. All right. Uh, cool. So, I we'll we'll do another replay in a second here. I just want to really really quickly. Uh, you can make the game if you want. Just click custom game melee, and then just make any map. Uh, or if you mm -hmm. want me to make it, I can do it too. It doesn't matter. I just want to give you an example no. really fast, up to five and a half minutes of what you could have had, and compare. Right. Okay, maybe you should make it for my for some reason my maps aren't loading. Sure, that's all good. Uh, mine are kind of not loading either. <laughs> uh, oh. Okay, okay I think I think I got one. I got one. So I'll invite you to the game. Oh yeah. All right, and then add AI. Zang Armash music vibe champ. And Protoss, or your, sorry, Protoss versus Terran. And we're good to go. Nice. Yo, Vagician, thank you very much for the nine months, dude. Thank you, thank you. Hell yeah. Digen, thank you for the 47 as well from earlier. I appreciate you, man. Thank you very much. Fuck yeah, guys. All right, so once, yeah, you know, as well, as like I said before, if there's anything you want to ask me during this, by all means, feel free. This will also be a good example <laughs> for you in terms of like how I build my first pylon and how I build against the wall and also how the initial two minutes goes for the first part of the build. This should be your reference right. to like doing that yourself too. So just do this, this first two minutes, do this every single game. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna spend the first part of the game grabbing my probes and putting them on close mineral patches. So I always grab from the middle and put them outwards. Middle, put them outwards. What the fuck, are we on a slow game speed right now? This feels <laughs> really slow, it's okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, so I just stacked two probes per close patch, which is awesome. And now I'm gonna build my pylon next to my uh, my mineral wall here. And now I can grab a, another probe and build my gate. And we'll send it like now because the pylon's about done. And now we'll just build the gateway. And we'll build the gas. And we'll just go scout. We can now chrono boost my nexus and just keep making probes. So that's like the, just the initial opener. And then now we're going to rally the Nexus to the natural at 19 supply. And the fact that we have double all right. stacked all of our close patches means we're going to get, definitely get the earliest Nexus we possibly can get. Uh, because that's the important part of mining your minerals is definitely stacking those close patches. So now we're at 19. So rally the Nexus to the natural. Make another probe so we don't miss the probe because we, oh, we still want to go to 20. Yeah. And we can just right click our probe on his like mineral patches main for now just for a second, which is fine. And now as soon as the probe spawns, re-rally that Nexus to the gas. Build that nexus and come right back and rally that, like, you know, send the probe to the gas for a second. 
don't look at his base for too long. Like, you can take a quick glance at it or something. Just make sure you don't fuck the core up. Make sure you make that core as soon as you have 150, and then make that probe again. That's, a, that's bigger than scouting him. And then you can start that gas as soon as you have enough 75, while still maintaining probe production. You can move your probe around his base for a second if you need to. The scout, whatever you can. But again, that's not the priority. The priority is definitely your build. And then finally, we now have our pylon. So now we didn't we didn't fuck up our build at all. And now you can you know you can make read try to make reads on uh, what you think his build will mean and stuff like that, and that's totally fine. And you can also use replays as well to look at someone's build to like really take your time to like read someone re read what something meant in their build. And now we have probes coming out of uh, Chrono Boost because our pylons are done. We have a soccer coming out with Chrono Boost. And now we can take this probe, that first probe that goes to our natural, we can build a pylon with it. And now that's going to be our third pylon. And we still don't supply block because the Nexus gives us supply. And now we can currently start natural for more probes. And from here on out, you could be like, okay, I have a sentry being started. The next thing I'm going to build is going to be my robo and my second gate while maintaining production out of my Nexus. And then I'm also going to then build a battery after, just to be safe. So we now have Robo, Gateway. We can start another Stalker in a second here. And then we can start our battery. And start our battery. And maintain production of probes and stuff like that. <clears throat> and now we can grab a probe and start sending probes like this. Like, build a pylon on the left side of our main base, just for vision of, like, a future drop. And we'll do another one on, like, the south, further south end. <clears throat> or, uh, send out that Lucid Phoenix. Chronobus out some probes. Uh, warp gate's about done. We get thrown on our double gas at our natural. And we can do another pylon for more vision. And now we can throw down our just additional stalkers. <clears throat> and then now, I would say, honestly, this is that moment where you could actually take like your third base when you're fully saturated and all your production's rolling. Because we have a lot of money and we can't really spend it properly. Like, and we, we don't, we really, we don't, like, again, you, you could go to the four gates if you needed to, or you could take the third. As long as you just maintain the production, that is the biggest thing of all. So make all right. another stalker. Make another stalker. And we can take another pile now to like the top right of our natural. And now we can take one more pile to like the bottom right of our main. So we have just no great dark spots. Take another immortal, take another stalker. And we can start currently boosting out our immortals too. Because again, if you were we're talking about like the situation of like, oh my opponent's actually gonna be aggressive. You don't have to change your expansion timing really against people who are aggressive. You just change your chrono boost allocation. And if you think you're gonna be attacked, you can just instead chrono boost your units instead of your probes. And then, so I'm going to resume it right here, just because this is the exact same time when you got attacked. So let's just pretend this was your game and you were getting attacked right now. So now, in the game that you played, at 531, you had two bases, you had four, like two gates done with a robo, and you had two more gates on the way. You had seven stalkers, one sentry, two immortal. Right now, off of two gateways only and no other gateways in production, I have ten stalkers, one sentry, two immortal. So we, we have the same Sentry, Observer, Immortals, but I have three more Stalkers in this game than you did in your game, and we have less Gates because it was just maintaining production the whole time. But the biggest thing of all is we have a third base that's done already. I have a, right. I have a third base that's like already finished, and it's already ready to be saturated with... Like, I already have probes saturating it as well because in the game as well, you had, uh, you had 74 supply and you had 45 probes. We have 89 supply and 52 probes, and we have a bigger army supply too. Even though we didn't prioritize 
all the extra gates and the extra batteries. And the, you only really need one battery realistically at, to, to start, simply because the one bat like if it's unless it's like a really early like proxy all in, you'll have to make more batteries then for sure. But if it's like mm -hmm. more of a standard build where you have time to react and things like that. Having the ability to have battery overcharge changes everything so drastically about how powerful your build can be. Because battery overcharge is fucking insane at shutting down the timing. So, uh, having the one battery is definitely important, but you don't need to go crazy on batteries. So, if you don't do things like extra gates, extra batteries, all these extra buildings when you don't need them as early, you give yourself the ability to keep your economy flowing, and now that I have a third base that's done, and I'm still pumping probes oh, out of my three bases, yeah. what we can do from there is I can actually go into... I missed you, bro. Uh, Welcome back. I can go into... How was um, Mexico? Now I can go into, like, more gates, and I can go into more production of, like, more unit-producing buildings. And I can just ramp it up from there uh, and not have money problems, because I could actually... And the, the biggest thing of all is... I then could add on more production because I could actually maintain it. Out of the four gates you built right. when you built them, what you did to yourself off of like 45 probes and a bunch of extra gates and kernel boosting your mortals and shit like that, what you're doing to yourself is you're doing like, like it's like a, like think about like a mountain where it's like up, down, like it's just like, a, it's like it, it goes up really hard, really fast with your all, like all the initial hit of that extra production for that one round. And then it goes way fucking down again. It doesn't like uh -huh. plateau like a steady line. Because you can't maintain four gates and chrono boosted robo or immortals out of your robo with that few probes. So you ramp up your production to do one cycle of it and then it goes down again. What if you just maintain production the whole time? You're going to get the same result either way. But if you have more right. probes mining more minerals faster, you could add on more production and actually be able to maintain more production then. That's why I'm saying like if you actually expanded in that last game, it wouldn't actually have been that bad. It would have actually been good if you would have just maintained production because it allows you to then have more money to maintain more production with. That's like the biggest concept you have to just really fully embrace for yourself because if, which means that the biggest rule of thumb of all is you don't ever stop producing out of your gateways. The ones you already have. <laughs> it doesn't mean you have to make more gates. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, so I would say for for you definitely uh, save just just so you don't somehow accidentally forget or like alter the build without realizing it. Definitely save what we just did for that five minute example, and just use it. You're like use like the, at least the initial opener of like you can take it all the way to five thirty as well. This was actually solid up to this point in terms of like just how efficient you could be, and it's just simply like never supply blocking, placing our pylons around our base wherever we want like architecturally like placing them in, in good locations. And then just producing probes, stalkers, and immortals the whole time. Right. All right. So we'll jump. We can jump into one more really fast. Uh, I'll break down some more about what is going on for you. Um, it might be some of it might be a little bit repetitive. I'll, I'll try not to get too repetitive. Uh, we'll kind of brush past the super repetitive macro points that we might have already covered a lot. But if you have like I don't know what other replays you have, but we can jump into one that like maybe goes into more macro focus like multi prong or later in the game engagement type stuff okay um let's see let me go back to the score screen yeah so just host up a new one and then uh we'll start up a new party again yeah i'll start up some macro <laughs> game yeah i think i think in this one the guy ended up going mass tanks and i suck against tanks in general sure, sure. I would say honestly, that's you're you're falling into the trap again a little bit, of uh, composition, and like I'm I'm not gonna lie, I think you could have beat that Terran player who dropped you with Marine Tank, uh, with just Sentry Sentry or one Sentry and Stalker Immortal. You don't even need Zealots. Zealots would just be overkill. It's like a it's like a oh you're gonna make this really good for yourself, just make some Zealots. But in general, if your composition every single game. Just goes initial openers of stench, of stalker and immortal, and it turns into like charge the archon immortal. So you you maybe you make like sixteen or like ten stalkers or up to like maybe sixteen stalkers, and then you switch into just zealots, archons, and immortals. If you do that every time, you will be fucking solid because if your opponent is going tanks and just struggling against that, upgraded zealots with charge and armor and weapons will fucking steamroll tanks like crazy. Especially if you macro right. it well. 
Yeah, I think I think the the big thing here was that he he went like a confusing comp for me. He went sure. mass tanks plus a lot of hellbats. So I was like, okay. I was confused about whether I should build zealots or not. So in a situation like that, that sounds more like mech, right? Uh, yeah, it was. Mech. Yeah, and if you're fighting against someone who's going mech, it's the biggest thing about mech is, is it takes forever for it to build up. It's not like mech mech cannot like max out super fast unless it unless it actually is super uh, hellion heavy. That's the only that's the only unit they have that's not really ridiculously gas demanding that is also going to jump their supply up. But if they're going mech and they're going for super turnally trying to expand type of mech and you, you just play your style of like I'm just going to go for my units like I'm making zealots I'm making stalkers I'm making immortals the units that are not so fucking expensive where they take forever to make to build up your supply if you just play the expansion killing game you will win a lot of the time especially in platinum you will destroy your opponents but if you find yourself in a situation where you're like okay well these zealots they don't really seem like they're making my life easier because my opponent is always pushing me with or like it's always fights where I'm like running into a bunch of the hellbats and my zealots all die and then it's like hellbats are still left over and tanks are just killing the rest of what I have you have a lot of options where you could do a situation where you could transition to air is one way you could do it you could just start making air like carriers for instance and then you could make your life easier that way another thing you could do is you could add in some type of AoE that could kill the hellbats like you don't even have to take the fight in terms of like an A move a whole army situation but instead, like, let's... I'm not fully recommending you have to do this, but it's just an idea. Hypothetically, you could have, like, let's say two disruptors in your army. And you could just very patiently shoot him with, like, a disruptor shot and blow up a bunch of hellbats and then engage. Yeah. I'm just really scared to use disruptors. Sure. I feel like the micro is going to completely mess That's fine. Me up. Another thing you could do is add in, like, maybe, like, three Colossus. And your Colossus right, okay. would... The, the, the Colossus are bonus to light. And they AOE in a nice arc of a sh like it's a it's like a concave esque shot, so and Hellbats will concave against you, and you'll be just AOEing the shit down out of Hellbats like crazy with some Colossus. You don't gotta go mass Colossus, just a few, like three or so, and you could add that right. in with some of your mortals. Right. Um. And then uh, even then, like another thing you could do is if you're afraid of like oh he's got Hellbat or he's got, Hellbats are scary. Another thing you could do that's super easy, a movable, just make a bunch of archons. It's, it's just like skip the zealot aspect of what you're doing, and maybe just make mm -hmm. stalker, pure stalker archon, and maybe a couple of mortals as well. Right. Okay. And that would be also very good. Just adding in some, like maybe like eight archons because they would tank, they, like yeah. it would absorb the shots of siege tanks really well. And arc, uh, archons have a bonus to biological attack that does AOE. It always does AOE splash. But it is a massive bonus to biological units, and hellbats are biological because they can be healed by a medevac. Yep. Yeah. All right, so we'll just kind of skip through this early game pretty fast. I'll just try to quickly touch on your uh, your build again for a degree. <laughs> Yeah, this is that moment where you're, uh, you're, I mean, we just showed you the example build, but you're definitely your nexus is always coming down way too late. Um, yeah. Another thing, too, I, I like that you actually just went, oh, you're, you're injuring bay blocking my natural? Fuck it, I'll just go take my third. That's a good move by there, by you on that part. Uh, that's very, definitely want to do that. I would totally recommend doing that myself. I would always do that. That, that would be my response, too. Um, the only thing that's happened to you so far that sucks, and I think it's because you were scouting and you probably just didn't pay attention to it. Is your gas, your gas has been blocked exactly? Yeah. That definitely sucks for you, and that should not happen to you if you do the build that I just showed you because your gas is going to go down before that SV would have blocked it. Like your nexus is right. like for instance, your nexus this game went down at two at one fifty five uh, one fifty nine. Your nexus should be going down around one thirty one twenty five. So right, like I mean, that'll come way faster. Your gas will be coming down right after the core. And your gas would have been most likely been taken, like, realistically, around the, around just before he would have tried to block your gas. Now, thinking about... I'm going to talk about, like, your scouting, okay? For instance. 
uh, like just an idea about how to play it for yourself that's not going to be so overwhelmingly time consuming. So when your probe gets into your opponent's base, and I'm going to look at your camera vision really fast. So you're looking at your probe. This is so far, this is fine because you have production still going. And as long as that maintains, it's okay. The only thing that's fucked up is you should be rallied to your natural and you're not. You rallied to the gas. Uh -huh. And you have a 17 probe on your, your mineral line as well when that should be one of the gas as well. So that I mean, obviously you could fix that too going into this. But right now, automatically, what just go hit uh, go to your vision on this so you don't like look at his entire base. So like just uh, you can hit like the all viewer thing and go to like your, yep. your vision alone. What do you feel like you would expect from a Terran player if you saw this already from your vision? Just a depot and the natural, that's it. Like, I what, mean... What would I expect? I don't know. I, I really don't know what to expect. I'll just, okay. go, I'll just go straight in. So but I, I guess like if the depot's in the natural, then then it means like he's not really building a wall at, at the top of the ramp. Yeah. Agreed. But that's it, I guess. And I would say, if you think about it, that probably means it, pr it doesn't guarantee like th these are just tendencies, but these are ways you can read people. But this probably means this dude is going to expand because if he doesn't have the right. intention to wall his main, to hide his tech, uh, to do shit like that, he's instead trying to wall his natural. It means this guy is probably going to do some weird type of build to instead take a natural. And that, you know, that's just so far what we can tell is probably going to happen. Now, if we go further into his base and we see no natural yet, that's okay. But now we see nothing at the door, the ramp here. So now I would say let's we need to scout further into his base for sure. Like go towards the mineral line and stuff like that because this could mean this could totally be proxied. It might not be proxied, but you don't really fully know what this is yet because this guy hasn't shown you enough of like what it feels like it could be. But I feel like what this could be is it totally could be a proxied Rex. It could be. Uh, with a follow-up of an expansion. So maybe not a proxy all-in, but maybe a proxy harassment into a into a fast expand. It could be totally something like that. But again, we're, we're, this is only right now. We haven't really fully understood what is going on yet. So it shouldn't be... It's not too much to think about. It just So far, it looks like he might want to expand and it maybe he's proxying you. And if we go further into his base and we discover more about what's going on, we have now ruled out the fact that there's no proxy. So now, if it looks like he wants to expand... But there was a, a chance that he potentially could have been proxying you or not. And now we've ruled out the fact that he's not proxying you. I would say now there's a guarantee he's going to expand. This is a really full on going to be an ex It's a very highly likely that he's going to expand. Now, scouting his gases is a big deal. That's always a big deal. You want to know how much gas he has. Now we can, we've just confirmed there is not one gas. And now we've confirmed there is not two gas. There is a, this is a gasless build. This now guarantees this dude is going to expand because there is no proxy. He's ex he's building his barracks at his base. He's building his depots in a way where he's walling off his natural. This is very, very, very risky. If he if you were to all in him, this is super risky for him if he was going to take uh, uh, a natural, for instance, if he wasn't going to continue to wall off that natural of his own. You know, does that make sense? Like, if you were going to just all in him, he would just die if he has gasless one racks over here and you were yeah. going to be aggressive. So it makes sense that he's going to finish continuing that wall at his natural and he's going to, like, take his natural base. This And there, there is also no threat for you to feel threatened at all because there's no gas here. And there's also no chance... If he's got a, if he's got a situation where he's already got a barracks at his base... He can't afford a lot of proxy racks to go to your base, so it already it already lowers the potential th chance of a threat to attack you. Mm -hmm. So I would say this looks very expansion heavy from the Terran. This looks very non-threatening uh, for the early game. <coughs> and now you've also confirmed. Oh, expansion, cool. So it looked like he was gonna expand, and now you see, cool, he's expanded. So it makes sense what he's done. If you think, oh, you're gonna you're setting up your depot wall to set up for an expansion, and now you've confirmed that there's an expansion here, this 100% rules out anything weird that could have been going on in any way. It already really looked like nothing weird was going on, other than the fact that he was doing a gasless build that's super defensive. But now it's impossible for him to afford anything out of what you've seen. The fact that he has a command center, a depot, and a racks all thrown down, he physically cannot afford anything else right now. Like there, there could not be like two more racks at your base at the moment. It's impossible. Right. Uh, so now, when you run your probe down the ramp, uh, eventually, and you see 
Okay, he also built an, an engineering bay at my base. This is only available because he's gasless. Uh, and, like, this is just another thing he's invested into after the, like, you know, later on in the game. Uh, uh -huh. So, what I would say as a result of this is these are, like, if you want to do a standard build, you totally can. You could, you could make it always, like, Chrono Booster Nexus, Chrono Booster Nexus again, and Chrono Booster Stalker. These are all standard things you can always do. But I would say if you wanted to react to this in a way where you could make a real reaction, you do not need a Chrono Booster Stalker anymore. You could just go back to Chrono Boosting Probes full on nonstop. And right. be, when you saw, and also notice how you made the uh, the core five seconds ago. Look at where your probe is. Uh -huh. You confirmed he's gasless way earlier than five seconds ago. You confirmed he's gasless about like 30 seconds ago. So right. you, there was no need to build a core when you built the core. And then you also built the core after you confirmed he went for a gasless expand. So all you've done to yeah. your build is you've just slowed yourself down like a lot. You're like the only way your build would make sense is if you actually wanted to take if you're going core first against somebody with gasless expand is if you wanted to actually take your second gas super fast and you wanted to do something like proxy a stargate or something like you wanted to be the aggressive side because if you are going to be the defensive side going for a core first is just is just slowing you down like crazy right <laughs> You could proxy two racks and leave one at home though, right? You could do that, but the thing is, that's why I'm saying that's a possibility. But the fact the, the fact that he found the command center, that confirmed he can't do that. That's that's where that kind of comes down to into. So I was just kind of answering a, sh a question in chat. Yeah. yeah. All right. No. So, I would definitely say your build is, it's a little bit behind, and here's another reason why. You keep have you're like this game specifically, you're having a very heavy gas investment. Like, here's, here's what I mean. Standard build for Protoss, for you, should be, you should be ideally going for 16 probes on the natural mineral line for you. And as you have 16 is when you should be starting your gas. You're actually starting your gas right. when you have like eight or like or like six or eight and you're saturating your gas just before you have 16 and you're under saturating your mineral line again so you're, you're dropping your mineral line down to like you're prioritizing your gas to under prioritize your minerals and again these kind of things only make sense if your build is going to be a timing of tech so if you're going to do like a colossus all in or something like that on two bases this would make sense but if you're if your plan is to take a third base under prioritizing your mineral line makes no sense. You 100% need to keep that mineral line prioritized. Because gas should be an addition to your minerals, not an, not a priority. And you're taking a third base. So yeah, that it just it all it does is it's another thing that slows you down. Cuz like look at your gas right now. You cannot spend it. Uh and the only way you could spend it is if you did something like add it on tech. And if you add on tech way too fast, Look at your gateways. You're not building gateway units. Like you can't actually yeah. maintain production if you if you over prioritize your gas and then spend your gas by adding on tech way too fast. When you're also then trying to take like a third base. So just make sure you really have that mineral priority focus while then adding on gas after. Okay, so now you just got in his base and you died to a cyclone. Now that's a tell where you go, okay, this guy's got a bunker and a walled off natural, and he's got a cyclone already. That cyclone, like, now I'm not saying that automatically, oh, he's going mech for sure. That's just 100% mech. It looks like it could be, like it's going down the mech path because the cyclone is a very specific unit to make really early in the game. That means he's got a tech lab factory. Uh, and he, he not only did he open gasless, but the first time he scouted him, he now has a cyclone. And that's, that means that he probably exploded his gas and just rushed into a factory. So, you know, that... It's it's a it's a it's a little bit of a weird sign, but it doesn't guarantee anything. So scouting more in the future is definitely going to be good to do. But uh, <laughs> again, compositionally, <clears throat> doesn't matter too much about what he's doing, as long as you play efficient for yourself. You could beat him with a lot of different compositions. Like even though if, I, if zealots are bad against hellbats, it wouldn't matter if you just have good supply. 
and now you scout to his base and you see factory factory widow mine third command center missile turret uh that's huge this is mech you've now fully confirmed it's mech and the best thing you can do against a mech would be try your best never to attack a fortified base but always try to set up a fight on a new exposed base so a great way to do that would be uh st and then, like for instance like the fact that you're making a bunch of gateways um we'll come back to that in a second but i would say really try to have keep a tab on like when he sets up his third base like when he tries to actually land that because you just saw the third command center is almost done but when he tries to land it go re get ready to attack that and you can see where he's building that third command center usually Terran will build their third command center closer to where they want to land it doesn't always happen that way but i would say probably what makes sense is that it most likely makes sense that this third command center that you just saw, that you just scouted is going to probably lift off go south and land at the base below his main base that way he can also have tanks on the high ground covering the low ground it would just probably make sense he's being super turtly uh so one thing you could do is you could make like a zealot or maybe like two zealots and you could just like have a zealot sitting at both his possible third bases and just just chill at that location just to see when the command center comes over now what you're doing as well when you're making a bunch of uh oh, gateways like this yeah. uh the thing that makes it welcome back we miss you the thing that makes it really hard is you don't need to worry about being defensive against what he's doing like you don't need to make these gateways for defensive purposes and the reason why is because this dude opened up gasless to expand and he's then expanding again to a third base this is not a terran who's going to do it all in right now so you do not need to go overly defensive with tons of gates and uh uh, you know, freak out in that regard. Because again, remember the thing we talked about last game with the thing, example I showed you was the more production you make for yourself like in terms of probes, like the more money you make for yourself, the faster, the more production you can then add on and maintain from that point on. So instead, right. what I would say would be a better move to do here for you because you scouted the third base and you know it's totally mech at this point. It's tank widow mine. Or sorry, it's cyclone widow mine, third command center turrets. That's what you've seen so far. It's It looks super turtly. I would not be surprised if there were tanks in his base as well, but you haven't seen them yet. Instead of making all these gates, add on a fourth base. And the reason why this would be a big deal is because look at your main base. Fully saturated. Look at your natural. Oversaturated. Yeah. Look at your third. Fully saturated. And you're still making probes. So you have nowhere to send your probes to, and it's just your economy is starting to like hit that stifling point where it's not really continuing. If you took a fourth base... And you went all the way to like 80 probes and you actually saturated your bases properly where it wasn't massively oversaturated anywhere and you just maintained a good economy you just ramp your economy up because he looks like he's turtling on mech because again it was a gasless opener it was not a hellion based opener where it's like trying to roast your mineral lines and stuff like that that's great for you in terms of being greedy nothing will stop you and once you get to that like four base setup or like maintaining four base economy so that means like when your main base starts mining out you take a fifth base and so on and so on you then add on all your production and you just keep him defensive by just ramping on pressure with a good economy because you're stifling your economy to add on production now when it's not ready yet like you're pulling a trigger too early essentially on your production and i feel like this would only make sense if there was no third command center so like the fact that you saw a third command center makes this make not make sense for the gateways but instead if you saw like five factories on two bases and you saw an army that looked like it was like let's say that you saw like five tanks five factories and like a widow mine also killed your your hallucinated phoenix i'd be like okay that looks fucking scary and you could totally stop making probes now and you could start making a bunch more gateways so that you could he would two base all in you when you're defensively three base absorbing it that would be okay but like that that could make that that could justify the gateways that you just made but the fact that he's you saw a third command center and you only saw two factories and a third factory being started. It, you can't really justify your uh, your gateway additions right now. Because look at what you're doing too. You're now adding on a fourth base anyways. I love that you're taking a fourth base. But you should have done it way before you made the gateways. Uh -huh. Like you should have been started that... Like all your bases are just a little late essentially. Like that fourth base should have been started honestly around six minutes. Oh, this, oh I remember this. He, yeah, I just, I just missed. Like the two medivacs just came in and flew like a bunch of widow mines. I just missed that. I think I lost like 
It's okay. 30 drones. Like, it, yeah, you, yeah, you lost a lot. It sucks if that happens. That definitely is painful. But, like, look at your third base, too, though. You have so many fucking gates in production. You have... Uh, in production, you have... Um, or you just made an additional, like, four gates in your main. Or five. you made five more gates in your main because you were on two, now you're on seven in the main base. And now you just made another six gates at your third. So you just added on... Uh, what was that? What did I say? Six or... Wait, what? You added, you added on five and six. Yeah, so you added on 11 more gates in total. And that's, again, that's a lot to add on right now when you're not even ready. Even if the Wood Mines didn't even hit you, this is a bit excessive on the gates. I would say, right. if, if, I would say the gateways you made in the main, if you made the fourth first and prioritized that and then added on the more gates to go to like uh, seven or eight gates in the main, that would have been totally fine if you did the fourth first. But adding on the extra gates at like your, your, uh, your fourth base or your third, like these extra six gates again, this only really would have needed to happen if you're not able to maintain production on your existing gateways because you could have actually right. gotten away with like eight gates or so and a robo all the way until basically max and then when you're max you could be like well i need more production to spend my money to maintain my to spend my bank then you could add on more then but this just i feel like this is just a sign that shows you that you're neglecting production because like look at your if i click on all your gates you have four gates that aren't actually being used and we'll mm -hmm. actually back it up to the point to where before the Widow Mines actually went off. And you're add, like you're adding on. Like, look at this. You have two gates not being touched. In your main. Now you have three gates. Okay, you just spent two gates, which is good. You have a third gate, fourth gate that are done now. And you're adding on a bunch more gates again. You did... Okay, you are... You, you did use them for the first round. I am proud of you. You did that. Okay, I, I did not expect that. I thought you weren't going to do that. <laughs> but, uh... Um... I, I just... The big thing to note is you're like you're I feel like you're ramping up your production a little too excessive before you before you're at the ideal saturation of probes and now once this happened with all the with all the probes dying to widow mines it might sound weird but the best thing you could have done for yourself is like you already I would say barely could not afford what you had before the probes died with all the gateways you just made for yourself but now that your probes are mm -hmm. knocked back down to like, uh, you know, you just lost, you're losing a shitload of probes here, and you get knocked back down to like the 40 range. I would I actually tell you, I would highly recommend you to cancel all these gateways you have at your third, and just use that money that gets freed up to chrono boost your probes and recover faster. Right. And then also, if this happens to you too, where someone does some shit to you, where like they have like all these widow mines at every different base, and you're like, fuck, that was really annoying. Just put one cannon at every mineral line. In the middle of every mineral line, so that you can automatically kill widow mines in the future if this ever happens to you again, and you're not going to have like second and third rounds of hits hitting your your probes, because that totally I feel like that totally might happen to you right now. Yeah, it's happening right now, yeah. And that's uh, you're you're doing it now, which is good. But just keep chrono like if this happens, just keep chrono boosting probes, just chrono boost probes and recover faster and faster and faster. Because, like, right now, you're not building probes entirely the whole time. You're building most of the time, but you're chrono boosting no probes. And chrono there you go. One of them's getting chrono boosted, but the other ones are not. Definitely needs to uh, be a quick recovery on the probing. Um, yeah, it's, it's just, like, better priority of your opening of your build. The, the idea of, like... Focusing on your economy over your production, but maintaining production of what you have that exists. And then also fixing the problems that happen in your economy in terms of like, oh, I just lost a bunch of probes. Let's chrono boost a bunch of probes again. That needs to definitely happen. Because you could have bounced back so much faster than you are. Okay, you're adding in a bunch of Archons, which is uh, nice. Not bad. And you're maxing out, you're scouting where he is. He's got a bunch of Hellion Cyclone, it looked like, with some tanks. So I would say, be very careful about how you engage this. And I feel like, number one, you're engaging in a single file line, which is scary. And number two, you're engaging in more of the center of his base. And here's a tell that tells you why. If you look at the mini-map, there's a sensor tower in middle right, and there's a sensor tower in bottom, like, the bottom base below his main base. I would assume, uh -huh. without even looking at the, all of his division, I'm looking at yours still the whole time, I would assume there's a base in middle right. of the Like the 3 o'clock location of the map right now. Yep. 
So I would say it would be best for you to engage from the southern end of the middle right base. Because that is a higher chance for you to have a better fight. Because you're not allowing him to surround you. And you're instead allowing yourself to engage the edge of his base. And also be very careful too, when you know someone's going mech, try your best to group your army up just before you engage his base and then A-move him. Because you A-moved him from your base, so your army came in a single file line. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Oh, and he's got yeah. tanks, he's got planetaries, or he's got... Been not a planetaries yet, but he's, he's got a lot of command centers, he's got tanks, he's just super defensively set up. Uh, he's got ghosts now. This would be a good time, or I would say air. air. If you want to have an idea yeah. about what you can do here, fucking go air. Tank, Hellbat, and Ghost. Ghost is going to deal with Archons really well. Hellbat's going to deal with Zealots really well. Tanks is going to deal with whatever else is there. But that's a very anti-ground army. If you just added on mm -hmm. some some Stargate, versus somebody who's super turtly, you just start going, start going for a bunch of carriers, you would have crushed this dude. Yeah. Yo, Joy, thank you so much for the, the fucking sub, dude. Much love. Hope you had a great New Year's and uh, Christmas. Oh, thank you for the 25, man. Okay, now he's pushing you. And now this is that moment again. Check this out. You just oh. saw him with the scout. I'm going to speed it up to where it just was. So right now, you just saw where he's coming and he's attacking you. And you want to get ready to fight him. This would be a good situation where if you look, look at like the surface area of engaging him. If you green box your mm -hmm. army like 50-50 again... To where like you sent like a big chunk of your army to the left of that structure. Rock thing. Yeah. Yeah. You could go from the left and the right rather than having your whole army bottleneck on the right. And it would yeah. just be one of those things where you, you pre-spread your army before the fight happens and then you aim move him. <laughs> and here's a, here's another thing too. If you find yourself being flustered and you're like, oh fuck, I can't. No. I just didn't have enough time. This is this is a bad fight. I, I can't pre-spread. This is too much, too fast. A better alternative than what you're doing right now would be run away from this base and let it die and re-engage somewhere else because right. losing that base you could run the probes away and just lose the nexus like you could for instance you could run the probes to middle left and that base is going to finish and maybe he doesn't go up there and maybe he goes down towards your natural and you have a way better fight and you give yourself a mm -hmm. way better situation to surround him so you now have a way better engagement whoever's army dies here is way more value than losing an empty nexus right so don't ever feel panicked and rushed to be like, I have to go because this is like if you let this base die and save your army in the process, that's so much better than what you're doing right now. Yeah. Because that just lost you the game essentially. Like that's yeah, game exactly. over. Yeah. So always feel like you have a choice where you can sack a base and go somewhere else. If you, if you feel like you fucked yourself in the point to where you didn't react to the like you don't you weren't map aware enough to go, oh, I can set this up properly. Instead, you were like, oh, I, I didn't miss that. I didn't see where that was coming from. Oh, shit. Okay, this is a bad fight now. Just don't take that fight. Back off. Take a fight somewhere else where it's going to be more advantageous for you. If you want to try and set up a fight better for yourself. And uh, compositionally, yeah. Like, what he has right here, heavy, heavy, heavy tank ghost and some hellbats. Air units would, cr would crush that. Like, carriers specifically. <laughs> carriers are just easiest to use. They're the most self- serving like super efficient like a movable area that you can make as protoss they're good against everything and to a good degree all right so any questions right. about anything we talked about no uh it's, yeah it's just a lot of information yeah for sure yeah. and uh that's why i'm gonna also i'm gonna make this a vod so i'll upload it to youtube and i'll i'll link it to you by like, oh, tomorrow perfect. so you can watch it again thank as many you. times as you want right thank you no problem man um, and I would, if you didn't do it already, I would definitely say save that replay too. Just the one I little gave you for that five minute example. Just so you have the mm -hmm. opener down, so you have like a good way to like open your build. Because you'll definitely see if you do that. Like it might not make like some people that look at the game and they look at someone play efficient and they try to recreate it themselves. They might think, oh, I'm playing mostly efficient too. It's fine, but it might not make total sense until you realize the clock. If you pay attention to the actual time of how it happens, you might be like, oh shit, okay, that's actually a big difference there. Like, doing things like going core first and going for uh, the extra gates before expanding again, shit like that, is slowing you down mm -hmm. so much in terms of, uh, you know, 
It, it's just like your, your overall buildup of your of everything is so much more than you might realize. Right. All right, dude. Well. All right. Thanks so much. Yeah. Thank you for doing a lesson and uh, good luck. And uh, like I said, I'll link you the video by probably tomorrow. Great. All right, man. Thank you. Take it All easy. Right. Have a nice trip. All right. See you, man. See ya. All right, guys. Boom. Coaching lesson done. In the bag. Hope you guys liked it. Hope it made sense. Hope it helps anyone out there that's trying to get better. But uh, shout out to Arden, Lucifer, for doing that. Uh, but yeah, guys, thank you for watching. Go check out more if you liked it. Many more out there. Uh, and yeah, I don't know. Thanks. See you guys in the next one. Till then, have a good day. Have a good night. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace, guys. See ya.